Hey guys, we're now going to talk about a type of projectile motion where you throw something in a direction that is below the horizontal, so sort of down this way. I call this negative launch because it has an initial angle that is negative, it has a negative angle. So if you throw something down this way, this is your initial velocity. Remember, we always want our angle with the x-axis, so this is the angle that I want. And that initial angle is negative, so negative launch. The vector is at an angle, so I have to decompose it into V initial X and V initial Y. V initial X will be positive, V initial Y will be negative because it's going down. And remember, this is your VX. It's always going to be the same. That VX will never change. Okay? There's, uh, in these problems, you start with a vertical velocity pointing down. We already talked about that. And we usually have just one interval. So, for example, here, you're going to leave the top here and basically become a projectile and kind of go like this and hit the ground somewhere over here. So just two points, one interval. Um, all variables are down. So your initial velocity in the y-axis is down. Your final velocity in the y-axis is down. So your velocity in the y-axis is always going down. Your delta y is going down because you're falling and your acceleration in projectile motion problems, all of them, really is always going to be going down gravity. So I can say that these are all negative because we established that going up is positive. Now this is a good example where saying that going down is positive might be a good idea because if everything's going down and I say going down is positive instead of having a bunch of negatives all of my variables will be positive. You could do that if you would like but just for the sake of consistency I'm going to stick with, with, with what we've been doing and say that going up is positive and we'll just deal with the negatives. Okay, so here I have an object that slides off an inclined roof. The angle shown is 37. Um, it comes off the roof with 5 meters per second, 3 meters above the ground. So the idea is that if you're sliding off the roof this way, when you come off the roof, you're going to have a velocity pointing in that direction. So this is really the same thing as if you were on top of a 3 meter um, tall house or whatever and you threw something down so instead of it rolling down on its own you threw something down this way at an angle of 37 below with an initial velocity of 5 it's the same thing but it rolls so the angle of the roof becomes the angle um, of the initial velocity here just some basic uh, geometry so this is actually 37 uh, that's my initial theta and my initial velocity is Five. Okay, I do have to decompose this into V initial X, which again is just my VX. And to do this, V initial X, or simply VX, is V initial cosine of theta initial. So it is 5 cosine of negative 37. We should expect this to be a positive number. So, and if you do this, you do get a 4, which is positive. We'll get a positive 4, actually. So V initial on the y-axis is 5 sine of negative 37. And the calculator will give you a negative 3, which, if you look in the picture, if you look on the little diagram here, it makes sense that this velocity is negative because it's pointing down. Okay, so V O Y is um, negative 3. Or I could have just written a 3 because the arrow already indicates that's going down. Okay, and then this guy is a 4. Cool. So I want to know, the first thing we're looking for is the horizontal distance. Horizontal distance is obviously my delta x. Um, let's look at the steps. I'm supposed to pick an axis. So obviously delta x is in the x-axis. Pick an interval. There's only one interval. And pick an equation. The only equation that I have for the x-axis is delta x equals vxt. So there's really nothing to pick, right? Just knowing that you're supposed to use that. All right, so I'm looking for delta x. All I need is these two variables. And if you look around, I have vx. vx is 4, but I don't have t. So I have vx, but I don't have t. And as always, I get stuck in one axis. I'm going to go to the other one. So I'm going to go now to the y-axis looking for t. Okay, and I can do this by drawing what's happening on the y-axis. So this is my initial velocity on the y, my final velocity on the y. The initial velocity on the y is 3, but it's going down, so it's negative 3. And the final velocity on the y, I don't have that. Um, and I'm looking for delta t. 
the drop is three meters it's going down so it's negative three because I said remember going up is positive and the acceleration is gravity negative G because we're going down this final velocity here will be negative but I don't have it so this is my unknown variable actually I'm sorry this is my ignored variable my unknown what I'm looking for is T okay so I can use an equation to figure this out and the first equation will work um, sorry the third equation will work delta x equals v initial t plus half of a t squared now if you try to do this you're gonna get a quadratic equation right this is gonna give you a quadratic why because you're looking for t and there are two t's right because you have two unknown t's here this is going to lead to a quadratic equation now you have two options you can embrace the quadratic and solve it or you can try to avoid it if you don't want to use equation three then you're gonna to have to use equations one and two and just for the sake of showing you that process I'm actually going to avoid the quadratic and instead of use equations one and two okay so I'm gonna start off here with equation number two and what that's gonna allow me to find is it's gonna allow me to find the final velocity which then I can plug into equation one okay v final equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x the final velocity is what I'm looking for so vy final squared the initial velocity in the y-axis is negative 3 get squared so it's gonna lose a negative um, 2 the acceleration is negative 9.8 and the drop in the drop is negative 3 okay so when you do this you get that vy squared is um, let's see what did I get here you get that vy so you're gonna simplify all this the vy will be the square root of some stuff and when you carefully do all this algebra you get an 8.23 meters per second now you have to be careful here remember every time you get a number coming out of a square root like for example square root of 9 this is technically plus or minus 3 so this number could be a negative and that's because 3 squared is a 9 and negative 3 squared is a 9 as well so even though uh, you might think that this is a positive look here your final velocity is expected to be a negative so you're just gonna force a negative in front of this okay so your final velocity in the y-axis is, is negative 8.23 once you do this you can now use the first equation to find the times so it's a work around work around uh, the quadratic equation v final v initial plus a t the final velocity is negative 8.23 the initial velocity in the y-axis remember we're doing all of this just on the y-axis um, is negative 3 the acceleration in the y-axis is negative 9.8 and now I have all the pieces to find time and if you move everything around you get that time is 0 0.53 seconds 0 0.53 seconds um, however that's still not what I was looking for this time here it was only so I could plug it back in this equation to find delta x so let's do that finally delta x equals vx t vx is 4 positive time is 0.53 so the answer is 2.12 meters okay the answer to part a is 2.12 meters let's make some room here for part b now part b is asking for the final velocity the magnitude and the direction of the final velocity so remember if you want to draw velocity it is um, sort of tangent to the path so it looks something like this and it is a two-dimensional vector so it is composed of vx and vy and the way you're gonna get your velocity is by finding vx your final vx and your final vy I need those two to be able to find v final and to be able to find theta final as well okay so let's do that I need to if I'm looking for V and theta finals I need to find VX final and VY final 
As always, VX straightforward, VX never changes. VX is just four. But I do have to find VY final, which actually, because I avoided the quadratic equation and I went through the two equation process here, I already know what the final velocity is. The final velocity is negative 8.23 meters per second. So I already have what I need. I have the two components of the vector. I just have, have to put them together. The magnitude of V is the Pythagorean of its components. So Vx squared plus Vy squared. So the numbers to plug in here are Vx4 and Vy is this. Okay, and if you plug them carefully here, you get a V, I got a here, of 9.15 meters per second. That's the magnitude of your velocity. And the angle is the arc tangent of Y over X. Here I'm going to actually plug in the numbers. The arc tangent of Y, which is negative 8.23, divided by X, which is 4. And the answer you get is 64.1 degrees. Um, negative rather 64.1 degrees that's what your calculator will give you um, and that is the final answer because remember with the arc tangent you have to be careful this has to be either in the first or fourth quadrant for you not to have to touch up the arc tangent this is in the fourth quadrant so this angle is good and it requires no further work okay so now there's a similar one here and I want you guys to try this practice problem and hopefully you get it.